What is up, guys? Mega Sonic here with another Dragon Ball Super episode. Now, this time, it is the 100th episode review. Now, I know this is late. I had a lot of things busy going on, you know, personal life and all that jazz. But anyway, I decided to finish this review up for you guys because, you know, you guys love these reviews so much. So, you know, I'm going to put it out there because there's a lot to talk about in this episode. And I think I could clarify a lot of things the community is probably scratching their heads about. So, remember to like and subscribe and share this video with all your friends, and let's get on with this video. So, let's begin with this episode. So, this episode was probably one of the most epic action episodes. However, it did have little problems such as the animation and little things here and there. But I can kind of explain to you guys what happened and what a lot of people are probably confused about. So, just, just bear with me. Anyway. So that's what kind of starts out with, like, you know, everyone continuously fighting. Uh, last episode, I believe it was just a Krillin-centric episode. So Krillin's the first one out. And there was a couple people here and there out of every other fight. But let's get into what happened now. So Vegeta is still currently fighting, you know, uh, Magetta. And I forgot, I keep forgetting the yellow guy's name. But they're still doing their nice little team combo. And Vegeta's, you know, having a little trouble getting out of it. Now Vegeta can go Super Saiyan Blue and just blast them off the you know, off the stadium, but it actually does a lot more damage than good, because if Vegeta does that, and he knocks him out, what if Hit sees him, and Hit tries to sideline him, or knock him out before, and knock him out, you know, it gets, it gets to the point where you have to think, like, a lot of these guys, especially Goku and Vegeta, can't exert their full energy, because if they do, it causes more problems than solves, like, it causes more issues than solves any, but anyway, like, as he's fighting, Kaba then rolls up, and Kaba's, like, walking, like, yo, Vegeta, get ready to get knocked out. And I'm like, Kaba, you dream big. Like, Kaba, Kaba should know that Vegeta physically is stronger than Kaba. And that Kaba, yeah, he has became an expert using the Super Saiyan, but that's about it. Him and Cauliflower are still newbies compared to Goku and Vegeta. But, anyway, they begin to fight. So, we kind of skip to, you know, the rest of the gang at Universe 7. They're still waiting, and, you know, waiting it out. Because, you know, that was the plan originally, just to weigh it out. Weigh our options, and whatever happens, happens. Pretty much, you know, stick together. If it, we start getting into fights, eventually, which will happen, uh, we'll, be, we'll be more physically prepared, and everyone else will be tired out. Which is something I wish the rest of the group figured out. But, you know, the rest of the group are pretty powerful people who can last long in a fight, so it's not a big issue. So let's get to the main character of this episode, Kale. My girl, Kale. Now, I love Kale's personality because she's very shy and sweet. And then when you have that sort of, like, brawly side, the, uh, the soul, it's called the brawly side of her personality, which sh shoots out, it really scares you. And, <coughs> sorry, Cole. Uh, getting into it, so Kale's fighting this guy, I believe, from Universe 4 or Universe 2. Or 10. I believe 10. Is it 10? Yes, Universe 10. And, you know, they're beating on her. Like, like he grabs her, and then, the, like, the big sumo wrestle guy from the last match who was fighting Basil, who I thought was ringed out, but I guess not. That's not the truth. He wasn't ringed out. He grabs her by her hair, and they start beating on her like crazy. So, like, punching her in the stomach, like, beating her until she blacks out. And I was really thinking, like, is she going to transform at this moment? And that's not the case. So she blacks out, and they throw her, but Cauliflower, who sees her flying across the sky, jumps and grabs her. And, you know, as usual, Cauliflower goes super sane, starts beating on both of these guys, and rings out both of them. Literally taking a chunk of the stadium out of it in the process. So, like, I'll, I'll, okay. I know a lot of people are upset about Cauliflower as, like, her finding Super Saiyan as an atomical way of using it. I feel like if she looks, she found a way that doesn't require too much emotion, but more like based on science and anatomy. Because she said, if you feel the thing on your back, you can use that to like help you transform. And I'll explain later why it makes a lot more sense than what Goku and everyone else was doing beforehand. So in the, so in the battle... Cauliflower sees Goku, and he's fighting against this Yajirak guy from Universe 6, 
which oh, wait, I think he's from their team, and she kind of kicks him, which makes wait is he from her team? He ha he has to be from their team, or he's from Universe Four. I'm not too sure, guys. I'm trying to think, I have to look over that list again. But I believe the Yadrak guy is in Universe Six, and that's an issue. That is an issue. But anyway, she kind of sidelines him while Goku's fighting him. And she's like, hey, can you teach me how to do what you're doing to Super Saiyan Blue, to Super, the other form of Super Saiyan? Cause, and Goku's like, well, you're not the level to do Super Saiyan God yet. Like, or even Blue. You're not even close to that. Like, e e like even for, like, like I know everyone's saying, like, oh, if she turns Super Saiyan Blue, it would kind of be, like, a downer. I don't think physically it's possible for her to turn Super Saiyan Blue. Because, yeah, she learned Super Saiyan, but, like, really... She just knows it. She doesn't know how to comprehend or how to calibrate her power properly. So she doesn't necessarily know how to properly use Super Saiyan. There's a difference between a novice and a master. So keep that in mind. Anyway, um, so as we run into, you know, they talk it and stuff. And she's like, teach me. So then she goes Super Saiyan. Goku goes, oh, cool. And she goes, uh, she goes Ultra Super Saiyan. Now, for those who don't know, Ultra Super Saiyan is a transformation that future Trunks can do. As well as possibly, I believe, also Vegeta can do it too, which is like the next level past Ascended Super Saiyan. But Ultra Super Saiyan, the problem with it, the reason the form is not used by any other character in Dragon Ball Z, is because it has such a large drawback that it causes a lot more problems than good. So like, if you can be using it, and next thing you know, all of a sudden, you, 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 you're you fighting like a heavyweight fighter against a lightweight fighter. It's just like, even Cell, when he when Super with Trunks use it against him, it just, he was like, you're able to beat me, but at the same time, you're causing more trouble for yourself. Uh, and that's like one of the constant issues with that form. That's why they never touch it. So Kale, not Kale, Cauliflower kind of transforms into that form. It's kind of funny because you see her, like, her muscles bulge and her ring bulge, and then her breasts bulge, which is also where, but you know, you got the pecs, you got the pec muscles there, so they got to bulge too, but. In the process for women, you know, breasts come out too. Uh, so as as the fight continues, you know, she tries to swing on Goku. Goku obviously deflects it, no problem. And he explains to her like, "Look, um, that's not a form we use no more. And we literally use that for not that real purpose." But then he tells her like, "This yet to the next level, which is Super Saiyan two. She's already kind of like figured out how to do." but don't really necessarily know how to do, because she explained that I don't really necessarily know completely how to do Super Saiyan 2, but I did it once against, um, against Kel. And she said, Is it has to do with the tingle in your back. And, you know, Goku actually kind of confirms that. He goes, something like that. Like, yeah, there's a tingle in your back. And that, I hope that pisses off a lot of people, because if there's a tingle <laughs> in your back, like, I guess... That's something that everyone feels when they turn Super Saiyan. Like, they feel the energy charged up, and they feel like sort of a weird tingling sensation in their back that they activate to, you know... So, to me, Super Saiyan is kind of like something in the spinal cord, whatever. That's a lot of, like, science and anatomy, and I'm not in that type of field of knowledge. But that's... I think that's what Kale... Not Kale. I keep saying Kale and Cauliflower. Oh, yeah, and so new slash to the fan base. Also, they're sisters. They're not lovers, so stop that whole lovers thing. I don't know where you guys got that. They did say they were sisters beforehand, so just stop that. Just just stop. Anyway, so, like, pretty much, Kali, you can't really get mad at Cauliflower because Cauliflower found a atomical way of doing it besides using, you know, the emotional glands in the brain, whatever those glands are called. I know there are names for those, but, like, the glands that give you emotion. Instead, she uses a something that, a side effect that happens in your spinal cord that you feel it on your back, and you know it had to be Super Saiyan. So you can't, you can't, you can't get mad, you can't get mad at her. You can't get mad at her for her skills and knowledge. But anyway, um, so she, you know, uses that knowledge and turns from the Super Saiyan too, which is like, <laughs> yeah, you had trouble transforming it before, I guess, whatever. And you know, her and Goku are fighting. You know, Goku, he's obviously holding back, even in Super Saiyan two form, he's trying to fight. Cause that's how Goku is. He likes to fight on par with one another. Just to see what a person can do in a fight, but like, it would be different if he was fighting against Vegeta, who Vegeta probably would just go super full power and just probably soccer in the mouth. But Goku is a little bit different. He likes to, you know, fight on equal terms with his um fighter, which is a downfall. But anyway, I'll explain. 
why that's going to go's downfall because that's literally I explain what happened later in the episode, which makes a lot of people in the series kind of scratch their head at it. So anyway, uh, Goku and Cauliflower are duking it out. Go- Goku is obviously winning, and then you know Cauliflower shoots a beam, and she feels like she's left out. So <laughs> Goku, after she shoots the beam, Goku like def- like deflects it with no problem, and like the way. Goku looks at her as like, uh, excuse me, miss. Like, can you like, can you step to the side while 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 we have our fight? That's rude of you. And Goku is like, she like, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Kel, and then she looks at Kel like, do you feel the same way? And Kel just gives her a glare, like, kind of telling her like, yes, and pretty much saying like, please stay out of this. This is for me. And this kind of hurts Cauliflower's feelings as a character. I keep saying Cauliflower and Kale because they look so similar. Uh, Kale's feelings. And this hurts her feelings a lot, pretty much, to the point where she blames Goku for making her seem, making her sister scowl at her, pretty much. And she transforms into Legendary Super Saiyan. Now, for those who don't know, the Legendary Super Saiyan is a certain transformation that wasn't canon before, but now is in the canonical universe of Dragon Ball Z. A side effect, it turns your hair green, and you get completely humongous. It's, I can compare it to Ultra Super Saiyan, which Kale you, which Cauliflower used earlier, but it's more in lines of, it's more of a refined version of, like, it's a separate Super Saiyan on its own plane of, like, the bridge of Super Saiyans. But anyway, um, she transforms, and it's so big, and it's so powerful, Everybody feels like hits dealing with some robot dude who plucks him off and kills it too. Like everyone, even Pride Troopers, everyone, even Vegeta, everyone stops and sees like Kel's wicked transformation. And everyone's like, what the hell is going on? And then she starts charging at Goku. And the one thing about it, I feel like a lot of people are saying, like, oh, Goku's getting mind built. Like, yeah, Goku was getting Molly Wild. Like, they do a scene. Which is straight from the Avengers. This is ripped from the Avengers. Like, there's even a side by. You can probably find a meme on the internet where there's like a side by side shot of like Hulk grabbing Loki by his foot and banging Loki on the ground like a like like a rag doll. And that scene is literally shot the same exact way as it is in Dragon Ball Super. Literally, she grabs Goku by his leg and starts slamming him like she slammed like Lo- like Hulk slammed Loki. So it's a fun little Easter egg. Proving that, you know, you know the, the constant, like, duality of um, comic books and anime. But anyway, getting into it. So Kel is going at it. Goku, Goku's like, geez, this chick's going at it. And the one thing I have to say is if you look at Goku's reaction to it, it's not like he's like, oh, shoot, I'm in trouble. It's more lines of, like, this is a little bit of a mild annoyance. But I'm actually enjoying this. And I'm not saying Goku's like, oh, he's easily going to floor Kel, but it's like, at the same time, it's like he's kind of taken back from his ability. So him and Kel are like duking it out. And Kel is, you know, providing a little bit more of a challenge, way more of a challenge than Cauliflower did. So forcing Blue Goku to go Super Saiyan Blue. And they do this just like they did in the Legendary, um, Legendary Super Saiyan movie where um, he shoots, like Goku does a Kamehameha at Brawly. And Brawly kind of just stands there and just takes it like it's nothing. Well, in this version... It's more in lines of, like, he does a similar thing where he does it and she just walks through it. Like, how Superman did in that screw attacks battle against Superman. Like, she just walks through it. And it's kind of, everyone's kind of saying, like, oh, God, Kel's stronger than Super Saiyan Blue. And I want to say that's not necessarily the case. The case also the fact of the matter is that Goku has a knack of holding back, and that's one of his issues. I feel that if Goku went full, full power... And, like, really pushed his limits. Like, because remember, like, he was able to push a huge, like, one of uh, Fuse Zamasu's strongest attacks right back at the dude. So, Goku had some energy, some strength in him. And I don't think Kale's legendary Super Saiyan is strong as Fuse Zamasu. I don't think that's the case. But I do believe that, like, when you get into it, uh, Goku, if he actually went all out, I believe he could, like, knock Kel back off the ring and pretty much she will fall. I will she untransform from it. It's unknown. I don't even think Goku was trying to kill her, but there's a lot of factors that pull into place about how Goku is. But I'm not gonna lie and say Kel was not a complete like badass, giving her a large, large issue to deal with. 
And so, you know, everyone's like, dang. And like, even Vegeta's like, yo, like, is this the true form of Super Saiyan? Like, she, this is a monster. Like, oh my gosh. And everyone's just like taken back from it. Like, yo, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is madness. I'm not gonna do the smarter joke, but you get what I'm saying. Like she's like, this is like everyone's like, yo, and Juran is like, yeah, you need to chill, chick. Juran, and he just flies like she starts charging at cauliflower, and like it got so bad. I remember one time earlier the fight, like she starts shooting beams up, knocking people out. There was like probably multiple people who got knocked out of the ring, and like she probably dwindled those numbers by a lot, and like even Kel, even cauliflower got knocked out. So, yeah. And Juren comes out and pushes a blast into her, knocking her out. And that's pretty much the episode. And even, like, everyone's taken back. Like, even hit retreats. Everyone retreats, goes back to where that corner was. Everybody's taken back from it. And, well, that's the episode, guys. Uh, My thoughts. My thoughts is pretty much, I really thought this episode was well done and well written. But it was some notable issues in animations. And I also clarify, like, I feel like Goku does have a knack for not using, but then again, this is a tournament where you're fighting for a long time. Using your strongest ability is like freaking dimming your whole hand. It's a negativity. So that's my video, guys. I'll see you guys later. Mega Sonic out. I'm sorry if this was late. This won't happen again. Probably will because it's summer and people go on vacation, but yeah. See you guys later.